Good evening. I'm David Gokenauer, and I'm here at Liberty Arts in Wairika, California, to bring you a live stream opening reception for the Forgery Show, which was scheduled to open tonight on April Fool's Day. But April Fools can't fool Liberty Arts, and this is no joke. With the new reality we are all living in, it's become necessary to learn new ways to communicate. So tonight, we're learning how to live stream to Facebook with my partner, Sharon Monaco, who is behind the camera as usual. First, I want to tell you about the history of forgeries and about the Art Rosier painters from Mount Shasta. As early as the medieval period, artists who entered into apprenticeships with an artist teacher would first learn skills of paint mixing and brush making, then would copy the paintings of the masters and other artists. Copying the work of established artists was common and the only possible method available for an aspiring artist to learn paint technique. Replication of work and will takes time and patience provides the viewer with an experience of looking back to earlier centuries when painting was in its infancy, to a time when artists spent years developing techniques to create a sense of dimensionality and images using newly developed pigments and skills to capture the imagination in ways that were formerly impossible. These forgeries by the art roster painters invite viewers to look back to the era of master artists, looking into those periods through the windows of each painting. It is well known that the Yafiaya tradition of painting, the help of apprentices was employed to execute the visions of the masters. The notion that the creation of an image was a shared process rather than an individual accomplishment was commonplace and the concept of forgery was unknown. The art process forgeries encouraged viewers to take a closer look at their own preconceptions about the nature of fine art and to invite the curiosity about the stories behind each painting. The art roster cataculiers follow the methods of the 13th through 17th century. Classical European systems of art training by engaging in active workshops where the master artist, Alec Velos, teaches by interacting with students and their pieces individually through example. In the spirit of atelier, art roster students learn and paint in a lively community of engaged artists, which is challenging and inspiring and supporting. Like ateliers of the past, art roster painters are deeply committed to developing as artists and they are a diverse group, with some boasting over 30 years of experience, while others are in their early painting. Century creating forgeries is a uniquely valuable means of intimately entering the aesthetic world of the original paintings and into the world of the masters. Master painter Alec Bayless was trained at the School of Representational Art in Chicago in the classical European atelier style which is passing on to his art roster students. Now let's take a look at the show. We have a painting by Anna Jensen. Pertuminous. Oil on wood. Original painting by Giuseppe Archimbolo. The painting by Archimbolo, most famous work and is a portrait of the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II. He reimagined as Pertuminous the Roman god of metamorphosis as the abundance of the golden age that has returned under the emperor's rule. Next we have Diana Herrera, inspired by Ethan. Oil on wood panel. Original painting by Jason de Graff in 2014. Then contemporary artist specialist in hyper-realistic still life painting. He stated his paintings are about staging alternate reality, creating an illusion on the painted surface filtered so it expressed his unique vision. Though his paintings may appear photorealistic, his goal is not to reproduce or document faithfully what he sees 100%, but to create the illusion of depth and sense not present and found in photographs, as well as to explore the relationships of light with reflective, transparent surfaces. Cindy Corrales, Pilgrims in Rome. 
oil on canvas. Original painting by Paul de la Roche. The French painter de la Roche achieved his greatest success painting historical scenes. He became famous in Europe for his melodramatic depictions that often portrayed subjects from English and French history. De la Roche aimed to depict his subjects and history with pragmatic realism. He did not consider popular ideals and norms in his creations, but rather painted all of his subjects in the same light, regardless of their social status. Next, we have the painting by Lou Andro, Escaping Criticism, Oil and Canvas. Original painting by Pierre Valdez Casso, 1874. Picasso's most famous work was Trompe to blur the boundaries between real and fictitious space. As an artist who, became, who came from a cabinet maker's background, he rejected the whimsy and idealism of romanticism and instead chose to focus on realism. Specifically, his style of choice was from Lloyd. Optical Illusions, produced in 1874, this painting proved not only to be his best work, but one of the most popular examples of this painting style ever created. The next work is the Adiana Ferreira Lilacs in a Glass, Oil on Canvas, original painting by Edouard Manet, 1882. During the last months of the artist's life, Manet lived in a hospital far from Paris, the city he loved. Many of Manet's dearest friends brought him flowers, including fellow painter Claude Monet, who brought these white lilacs which became the subject of what is often described as Manet's greatest painting. One of the images of the paintings he saw bouquets, so different from his images depicting characters and scenes of bustling Paris, provided Manet comfort during his most painful and lonely moments bring his death. Next, we have a painting by Suzanne Van Sumer, a Roman beggar woman, oil on canvas, originally painted by Edgar Degas in 1857. Degas journeyed through Italy to incorporate his French style into the classic elements of Italian art. He witnessed an ordeal of events that greatly influenced his work. The painting is based on Degas' encounter with poverty throughout the country. The nation of fabulous paintings showcasing a rich of history and luxury was paired with poor villages of Italian families barely able to continue food. The next painting is by Sidney Corrales, and it is called Bashi Bazou. Oil on Canvas, original painting by Jean Leon Zerum, 1868 through 1869. This painting depicts a dark skinned model dressed as a machine bazoo. The irregular soldiers who fought ferociously for plunder under Ottoman leadership and were infamous for their brutality and lack of discipline. The soldiers were traditionally unpaid and did not adopt a standardized uniform, resulting in the soldiers wearing whatever they could acquire on a march. This is a key point of the painting, as the brutal represent, reputation of, of the Bashi Bazou is contrasted by the silk tunic, quality clothing, and noble bearing of the subject. Now we have another painting by Diana Ferreira, Bouquet of Flowers, Oil on Canvas, Original painting in 1882 by Edouard Manet. Manet, a French painter, was one of the first 19th century artists to approach modern life subjects. He was a pivotal figure in the transition from realism to impressionism. His early work, The Luncheon on the Grass and Olympia, engendered great controversy and served as a rousing point for the young painters who would create impressionism. Today, these are considered watershed paintings that mark the genesis of modern art. Next painting is by Tom Bossier, Young Girl Reading Oil on Canvas. 
the original painting by Jean Henri Fragonard, 1770 to 1772. Henri was a prominent name within the Rococo artistic movement, which was filled with light, light colors, asymmetrical designs, and curved natural forms. The Rococo style emerged in 18th century Paris during the reign of Louis XV, when the French upper class experienced a new social and intellectual freedom, giving rise to a healthy skepticism toward well-worn truths as aristocrats and wealthy bourgeois focused on play and pleasure. Now we come to a painting by Linda Hardy. View on the Venetian Lagoon, Oil on Hammers. Ivan Ivanzovsky. Ivanzovsky was a Russian Romantic painter who was considered one of the greatest masters of marine, marine, pain, marine art. The view view of the Venetian Lagoon is an example of his ability to convey the effects of moving water and of reflected sun and moonlight. Next, we have a painting by Luanga, Pines in Sunlight, original painting by Ivan Ivanovich Shishkin, 1886. Shishkin was a landscape painter whose representations of Russian nature evoke the beauty and vastness of his country. In five decades and hundreds of paintings, Shishkin probably painted thousands of trees. His love of nature brought him to prefer daytime scenes as they allowed him to depict the interplay of natural light and lush greenery. Next, we have another painting by Lou Wonder, Salvador Monday, oil on wood panel. Originally painting attributed to Leonardo da Vinci in 1500. Salvador Monday by Italian Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci was long thought to be a copy of a lost original veiled with an overpainting. It was rediscovered and restored in 2011 and 2012. Although most leading scholars have considered it to be an original work by Leonardo, this attribution has been disputed by other specialists, some of whom suggested that he only contributed certain elements. However, preparatory chalk and ink drawings of the drapery of Leonardo are in the British Royal Collection. Next is a painting by Anne Jensen, the Lady Godiva, oil on canvas. Original painting by John Collier, 1898. English artist John Collier was a remarkable figure of British Romanticism and one of the most prominent portrait painters of his generation. This is the portrait of Lady Godiva and her well-known ride through Coventry, England, a legend dating back at least to the 13th century, in which she rode naked, covered only in her long hair through the streets of Coventry to protest the oppression taxation that her husband, Leofric, imposed on his tenants. It's by Karen Copsey. Self-portrait as a lute player, oil on canvas. Original painting, Artemisa Gentilesia in 1616 to 1618. Artemisia was an Italian Baroque painter, now considered one of the most accomplished 17th century artists working in the dramatic style of Caravaggio. In an era when women had very few opportunities to pursue artistic training or work as professional artists, Artemisia was the first woman to become a member of the Academy of the Arts of Drawing Florence and was fortunate to have an international clientele. Now we have another painting by Diana Herrera. This, the beautiful French title translates to Sparkling Roses in a Bottle. Originally painted by Edouard Manet in 1882. While roses were out of season and costly, as were many of the flowers given to Manet during his illness, the bouquets lived beyond the artist 
in the lovely paintings their poignant in their lasting beauty. We can imagine, can imagine each painting made as a response to a visit, perhaps started in company with the studio filled or in silence as the guests left. The bouquet is the trace of the departed visitor. The painting is like an answering visit to flowers given in return, now committed to another life as a painting. The next painting is by Carl Adams, The Sheep Pen Moonlight, Oil on Canvas. Original painting done in 1872-1873 by Jean-Francois Millet. A French painter, Jean-Francois Millet, was one of the founders of the Barbizon School. Millet is noted for his scenes of peasant farmers. He can be categorized as the realist, as part of the realism art movement. The next painting is by Janet Finnerden. Presentation in the Temple, Oil on Oak Wood Panel. Painted in 15, 1455 was a triptych. In this painting, the right panel, we see Mary as she presents the infant Jesus at the Temple. The next painting is also by Janet Finnerden. The Art of Painting, Oil on Oak Wood Panel. Original painting, Johannes Vermeer, painted in 1666-1668. through 1668. Art of painting, also known as the artist in his studio, and the allegory of painting is a celebrated genre painting by Johannes Vermeer. Largest example of Vermeer's style of Dutch realism is believed to be a full-blown allegory, commenting on the art of painting and the artist's role in society and perhaps even a self-portrait of the artist in action, hence the work's various types. This painting is by Anne McTavish, Tyrak, Oil on Wood Town. Original painting by Wayne Tybo in 1969. Best known for his paintings of cakes, pies, pastries, and toys, Tybo apprenticed as a cartoonist at Walt Disney Studios. Is, often, is most often grouped with the pop art movement for his subject matter. The artist considers himself, quote, just an old fashioned painter. He remains best known for his still life renditions of confections, which he considers interpretations of, quote, Americanists. In his works, objects and their shadows are characteristically outlined in multiple colors, creating a visual a pen akin to a vibration. The next painting is by Suzanne and her summer. Kimono with an iris pattern, oil on canvas. Original painting by Okta Sabruski. In 1927. Japan opened up to the outside world in 1868 with some artists from the then defunct samurai class traveling and studying in Europe. By 1900, there were enough Western-style artists and sufficient general public enthusiasm for their work to su sustain the new European-style movement. While traditional artists were not displaced, they found themselves altering their styles in consonance with the new possibilities. This piece seems to be a perfect intermingling of a Japanese subject depicted in a European style. And the last word, it's by Michael Wexler, Nighthawks, Oil on Canvas. Original painting by Edward Hopper in 1942. Nighthawks portrays people sitting in a downtown diner late at night. It is Hopper's most famous work and the most recognizable painting in American art. This piece captures the nighttime effects of man-made light with multiple light sources, which in turn cast multiple reflections and shadows none of which could be visible in daylight. The Liberty Arts team and the Art Roster painters of Mount Shasta, thank you for joining us for this virtual opening reception of the 8th Annual Forgery Show. We just couldn't bear the thought that you would not be able to see this exquisite exhibition, and we hope you have enjoyed our efforts. 
Mount Liberty Arts Gallery will remain closed for now. We hope you will continue to support us and know that we will be back. Sharon has photographed the show and it will be up on the website soon. Visit libertyartsbyrica.org. In the meantime, stay safe, stay home, and wash your hands. Thanks, folks. Thanks for playing with us. Now it's really time for a glass of wine. See you later.